She holds the pen in her hand like it's magic. For the first time, her hope starts to return. GLP-1 and GIP meds feel like a second chance. Hope returns, small and real. Then a little ritual, a fizzy energy drink to get going. By noon, heavy stomach, stalled progress, a creeping doubt. Did the medicine stop working? Not really, something else did. A mix you never saw coming. So as you may know, I'm on a GLP-1 medication. And it is a powerful tool, but it is not magic and it doesn't do all the work for you. You still have to make lifestyle changes. There are 12 things you should never mix with GLP-1 and GIP meds. Some will surprise you. One is so common, people do it every day without even thinking. Every item matters. We'll count them down, explain why, and tell you what to do instead. Don't skip ahead. The last few are the ones that really matter. Number one, too much coffee. Coffee lovers don't need to panic. One cup in the morning is fine. The issue comes with multiple cups, energy drinks, or heavy doses back to back. These medications already increase nausea, risk, and dehydration. Add too much caffeine and the body shakes, the heart races, and the stomach cramps. Moderation is fine. Hydration alongside caffeine is important, but caffeine should never replace sleep or become the crutch for energy. The medications help create consistency. Excess caffeine brings chaos back. Number two, over-the-counter supplements. Here's the one most people get wrong. Detox teas, skinny gummies, and fat burner powders. Many mix them with GLP-1 or GIP meds without thinking twice. The problem is supplements are unregulated. Labels don't always match what's inside, and many of these products mess with blood sugar, hydration, or even heart function. Some directly clash with prescription medications. The research shows that these over-the-counter supplements often contain stimulants that can stress your heart or even worse. Plus, GLP-1 medication can affect how you absorb certain vitamins and adding random supplements without knowing your levels is like throwing darts blindfolded. The only safe move is transparency. Every supplement should be mentioned to a doctor, even if it feels silly honesty prevents complications. One simple list or a photo of bottles can save someone from real danger. Number three, skipping meals entirely. Appetite drops on these medications. That's the point. But skipping meals altogether isn't the answer. Starving the body of nutrients doesn't equal health. It equals dizziness, fatigue, nutrient gaps, and slower metabolism. Intermittent fasting with structure is one thing. Forgetting to eat or deciding to avoid meals completely is another. I often remind them though, that nausea can be a result of overeating, but it can also be caused by leaving it too long between your meals. Food is fuel. The meds are supposed to help with control, not to encourage starvation. Balanced meals with protein, vegetables, healthy fats, fruits, and fiber give the body what it needs, even in smaller portions. Energy, focus, and sustainable weight loss all come from nourishment, not neglect. Number four, skipping sleep. Sleep doesn't sound connected to weight loss, but it is. Poor sleep wrecks hunger hormones even while the meds lower appetite. One night of bad sleep can spike cravings by 30%. That means the person isn't even hungry, but the body pushes for snacks, carbs, or sugar. Add disrupted insulin sensitivity, higher stress hormones, and slower recovery, and progress stalls fast. Now, if we sleep enough, then we actually produce GLP-1 in our gut ourselves. And research suggests that if we have bad quality sleep, lacking good quantity and quality, then that GLP-1 drops our own production thereof, so we become more hungry, have more cravings. Seven to eight hours of quality rest is the goal. Bedtime routines, fewer screens before bed, and consistency make a big difference. Sleep is not optional. It's part of the plan. Number five, high fat, heavy meals. This deserves its own spotlight. Creamy pastas, fried nuggets, and triple cheeseburgers dripping with oil. These meals already digest slowly. Combine them with GLP-1 meds that slow digestion even more, and the stomach feels stuck for hours. What people used to call a food coma turns into something worse. Instead of just feeling sleepy, it's hours of discomfort. And beyond that, the calories add up and block weight loss progress. Fats aren't the enemy, they're necessary for hormones and satiety, but the portion size matters. Pairing moderate fats with lean proteins and fiber makes meals enjoyable without regret. It's not stricter eating, it's smarter eating. Number six, dehydration. 
This one sneaks up on people. GLP-1 and GIP meds don't just lower appetite, they increase urination through salt loss. That lowers blood pressure, which can be good for those with hypertension, but with every bit of salt lost, water goes too. The problem grows when thirst signals are muted, people forget to drink, then headaches, constipation, dizziness and fatigue roll in. If ignored long enough, kidney function can even slow down. Oh, the body's going to shut the whole drug down if it feels you're losing too much water. So when you're burning fat cells, you're losing water. So what does the body do? Because you're in calorie deficit, because these drugs make you really feel full, you're not going to be eating very much. Coffee, soda and wine don't count as hydration. In fact, they make it worse. The fix is steady water intake all day. A general rule, half your body weight in ounces. A 150 pound person should aim for about 75 ounces daily, more if sweating. Number 7. Ultra processed fast food. drive through culture and GLP-1 meds don't mix. These meds slow down how fast the stomach empties. That helps people feel full longer. Add greasy, processed food on top and digestion feels like a traffic jam stuck at rush hour. Burgers, fried chicken and loaded fries. On these meds, they don't pass smoothly. Instead, they sit heavy, causing bloating, nausea, indigestion and even vomiting. It doesn't mean treats are banned forever, but they need to be rare and intentional. Choosing lighter options even in fast food spots prevents regret later. The medication is a tool, not a shield against poor choices. People should avoid eating sweets or fried or greasy foods when taking Ozempic, especially if they are experiencing nausea, vomiting, being two of the real common uh, side effects, unwanted side effects that happen, that can happen when taking these drugs. Number eight, sugary drinks. Sodas, sweet teas, energy drinks, and coffee creations loaded with syrup fight against the very thing these medications do. GLP-1 and GLP-1 GIP meds, steady appetite and blood sugar. Sugary drinks spike it right back up. That spike leaves the body confused. Blood sugar swings cause fatigue, irritability and cravings for even more sugar. It becomes a cycle. Drink sugar, crave sugar, repeat sugar. The fix isn't boring water forever. Sparkling water with lemon, naturally flavored seltzers, fresh juice or light smoothies are better swaps. They bring taste without the crash. Every small upgrade helps the body keep Keep balance. Also, did you know that weight loss medications like Ozempic, Zepbound, Monjaro, etc. can spoil due to improper storage? If that happens, your treatment will be rendered ineffective, negatively impacting your health and wealth. That's because these meds need to be stored between 36 to 46 degrees Fahrenheit before use, and once opened, they need to be kept below 86 degrees Fahrenheit, protected from light and heat. And that's why we've come up with amazing tools to help you store and protect your meds all year round no matter where you are. Visit forallfamily.com now or click the link in the description where you'll also find a special discount for first-time buyers. Moving on, we have number 9, Shady Medication Sources. This one shouldn't need saying, but it does. Never buy these medications from sketchy sources. Stories pop up all the time. Pens sold out of a salon, fridge, random online groups and even dollar store counters. That's not safe. Expired pens, contaminated products or wrong doses can cause serious harm. The risk isn't worth the discount. The only safe move is licensed pharmacies, trusted providers and legitimate sources. Health is not a bargain bin. Number 10. Antibiotics and steroids. These are common prescriptions, but they can interfere. Steroids in particular spike blood sugar and weaken the effects of GLP-1 medications. That slows progress and adds side effects. Sometimes they're necessary. That's not the issue. The danger is when patients forget to mention they're already on weight loss meds. Without that information, doctors can't adjust treatment. The fix is one question at every new prescription. I'm on GLP-1 or GIP meds. Do I need adjustments? That simple habit keeps everything aligned. Number 11. Alcohol in excess. Alcohol can affect blood sugar levels. Semaglutide can affect blood sugar levels. So when you combine the two, semaglutide and alcohol can intensify these overlapping side effects. So to minimize the risk of low blood sugar, when you drink is critical. A glass of wine with dinner usually isn't a big deal. The occasional margarita is probably fine, but mix heavy drinking with GLP-1 and GIP medications and the body pays the price. Both 
both alcohol and these medications affect digestion and the pancreas. Together, they magnify nausea, vomiting, and dehydration. In rare cases, the combination has even triggered pancreatitis, which is serious and dangerous. Dehydration is already a concern on these meds. Add alcohol, and the hangover feels doubled before the party even begins. The goal isn't banning alcohol completely, but moderation matters. Stay hydrated, pair drinks with food, and keep it occasional. Number 12. Other diabetes medications without supervision. Many patients take GLP-1 or GIP meds alongside other diabetes treatments. That's where the risk rises. Mix them with sulfonylureas or insulin without supervision and blood sugar can crash dangerously low. The symptoms, shakiness, sweating, confusion and even fainting aren't just uncomfortable, they are unsafe. The fix is simple but essential. Clear communication with doctors. Doses need adjustment when medications overlap. Never play pharmacist at home. Bring a list of everything taken, prescriptions, supplements, and even over-the-counter products so the care team can make safe choices. Now, we want to hear from you. Which of these surprised you the most? Drop your answers in the comments, we'll be reading them. And if you're taking these medications, storage matters just as much as usage. Click the link in the description to check out forallfamily.com for amazing medical storage solutions. They'll help keep your meds safe, protected and ready when you need them most. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video with someone who needs it. Your health journey deserves the best tools and it starts by avoiding the wrong mixes. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.